Okay, well, it has been a while since I've done one of these videos, so I figured it was time. Um, I got a mail call today. Empty Tombs Comics coming through big time once again. Um, got some great modern age books. Got some uh, great bronze and silver age books. So, if you're not a comic book fan, may not be for you, but some cool stuff. Uh, I'm going to be showing off here a little bit. And then also, there is a, a huge collection that I'm going to show off probably um, either this week or next week that I uh, took on. Really cool story behind it. And uh, so, yeah. But uh, again, I want to say thank you to Empty Tombs Comics for coming through. Uh, nice little uh, delivery. Um, today one of the books that's that, that came in the box uh has already been handed out it was a thor, mighty thor annual number 11 first appearance of Etri the dwarf who was the one who created stormbreaker you know him from uh if, uh, avengers infinity war played by uh peter dieklich um so jim you know what it's warming up to me because i thought about this people bashed on ben affleck playing batman i thought he did a great job um, people bashed on Heath Ledger playing the Joker. Phenomenal job. I mean, hit the, uh, uh, hit it out of the park. So, um, I am, I'm, I'm going to play, uh, wait and see on Robert Pattinson playing, uh, uh, playing Bruce Wayne and, uh, playing Batman. Uh, there were some really cool memes out there today. Like, you know, the guy actually, I mean, clean shaven, he's got the jaw struck, jaw bone, whatever. He can play Bruce Wayne. All you got to do is play a rich, a rich guy. Batman, put the cowl on. It's from here down. That's all you got to see. You get to see the eyes and the jawbone. He's got it. So, anyways, flip it around. Let's take a look at what Empty Tombs came through on today. First off, of course, as always, huge art germ fam, Stanley Lau. Um, a Birds of Prey book. This is going with me to San Diego Comic-Con uh, this July because Mr. Lau will be in attendance, uh, and uh, really looking forward to getting this signed along with all my other stuff. Um, one book that I probably won't get signed because the gentleman who did this cover for Justice League of America number one back in October of 2006 is Michael Turner. Uh, Michael Turner, of course, the famed artist who worked for Aspen Comics. Right there, there's the old signature. No longer with us. Um, a phenomenal artist, one, probably one of the best of the... Uh, Modern generation, probably up there with the likes of, uh, um, up there with the likes of, um, uh, J. Scott Campbell and and whatnot, uh, and uh, and Adam and Adam Hughes and all those kind of guys. So, cool Michael Turner cover, Justice League of America number one from two thousand six, uh, Superman Man of Steel number eighteen. From 1992, this is uh, December of 1992, and this is a the first appearance of Doomsday. Doomsday, the character who um, killed Superman, killed Clark Kent, uh, the Man of Steel, uh, the last son of Krypton, Cor uh, Kal El. Uh, great storyline. It's what got me into comic books. Was the trade paperback was it started with this issue right here, but this is uh, this is only my second. First print. This is not a, a reprint because remember, this these issues sold so much that they got into a fifth, a rare fifth print. Uh, they printed so much. Um, um, anyways, so there you go. Uh, J. Scott Campbell. Uh, this is a Danger Girl G.I. Joe crossover. And uh, this is from, this is a number one. Don't know when this is from, but really cool cover. Um, just everything badass, of course. Got the Baroness. Um, and just, yeah, I think this is just like a perfect, perfect uh, um, a book for, for J. Scott Campbell to, to, to do. Now we're getting into the good stuff. We're getting into the good old days. This is Uncanny X-Men number 201. This is January of, I believe... Um, I want to say it's like it's got to be like the mid '80s. This is the first appearance of Baby um, Baby Summers, who inevitably becomes, I believe, becomes Cable, if I'm not mistaken. So, uh, nonetheless, a cool, cool cover um, featuring 
Scott Summers, and of course Aurora uh, Storm. And uh, again, yeah, uh, first appearance of Baby Summers, who becomes uh, Cable. Fantastic Four, Volume 1, for, uh, first print, number 86. This is a, I believe, a Bronze Age book from the early 70s. These might even be bordering on a Silver Age book. Um, but uh, yeah, pretty cool, Fantastic Four. You just don't see that kind of artwork much anymore. There's the original team. Of course, you got uh, Mr. Fantastic. Um, uh, and you got uh, Sue Storm, Miss um, uh, the Invisible Woman, Ben Grimm, a.k.a. The Thing. Uh, and then, of course, you got Johnny Storm. And I don't know who this uh, fifth person is, but, of course, you do have, uh, oh, of course, Reed Richards. I could not, could just completely drew a blank on Mr. Fantastic's name. Of course, you have the uh, villainous Doctor Doom, probably one of the greatest villains of all time in uh, Marvel. Avengers, number 61, another Bronze Age, probably bordering on Silver Age book. Um, I did just come into uh, into uh, possession of some uh, Silver Age Avenger books, which I will show off at a later date. So, nonetheless, uh, really cool find. Again, amazing artwork. We have some one of the uh, more unique versions of the team. You have Vision, Black Knight. Uh, I'm not 100% sure if that's Doctor Strange or not. You do have, like I said, Hawkeye. And uh, they believe that, yes, it is uh, T'Challa, the, the uh, Black Panther. So this might actually be... Um, this may actually be a version from the 70s, maybe the mid-70s. I'll, I'll have to look it up more because I know uh, Black Panther didn't join until late. So, nonetheless, Avengers, number 61. Uh, it's a February issue. Don't have a year on there. Really cool book. Here we go, cool Captain America cover uh, featuring the uh, first time that Captain America and uh, Punisher uh, meet up. So, of course, check those out. The Check out the old school white go-go boots. Gotta love that. Of course, the classic white Punisher skull, the old red, white, and blue uh, Captain America. Um, obviously, a lot of people are very familiar with that, uh, that uniform, similar to what Chris Evans wears in... Uh, Captain America First Avenger from Phase 1 of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Um, though we never saw... Um, oh my gosh, I cannot believe his... I forget his name. Uh, Rob Bernthal um, wear uh, anything like this, but we have seen him wear something similar with a, a, a somewhat Punisher skull on it. So how cool would it be, though, to see uh, Bernthal um, Punisher versus Chris Evans' as Captain America... Doubt we'll ever get to see it, um, and uh, but still, would have been super, super cool. Now we're getting into some old school books. These, I believe, are some Silver Age books from the 1960s, maybe the early 70s. This is World's Finest, number 202. This features a, a crossover of part. It's, it's in the middle of a crossover event between the Cape Crusader and the Last Son of Krypton, Superman versus Batman. Um, check it out, old school, 15 cent book. It's got the uh, uh, comic code, uh, the proof by the, uh, the, by the comic code authority sticker on there. Just amazing, amazing um, old uh, Neil Adams uh, cover work there. So, Oh, look at Cheyenne just joined in the, cr uh, the crowd there. We know she's a huge Batman fan. We've got another world's finest, a number two. Uh, this one is number 207. Again, a Neil Adams cover from, uh, again, it's probably from the late 60s, maybe early 70s. Um, again, Superman versus Batman. Just check that out. The I love the old Batman logo. Um, this reminds me of the, um, the Batman 66 TV show. Um, and, of course, this one took a little bump up. It's a 25-cent book. So it must be, oh, because this is a 48-pager. Another World's Finest, Superman and Batman co-starring up, up, and away. And, of course, this is an issue where uh, looks like Batman learns to fly in rut row. Um, we got, uh, we got uh, Superman can't fly. Um, this is, this right here, this is very unique because this is a book. Um, I'll have to, 
I have to look this up. Now this is going to bug me because this, if you look at this, check this out. Going to recognize that name, right? Looks like Harley Quinn. And for those who don't know, Harley Quinn, of course, the quote unquote girlfriend of uh, Mr. Joker. And Harley Quinn does not make her comic book debut until probably the mid to late 90s. And I am really, this, this book really intrigues me. I'm trying to find, look it up on uh, Key Collector. This is um, World's Finest number 211. And it says, this issue, team up the fugitive from the stars, extra, the Bureau of Missing Villains brings back the Golden Age Har Harlequin. Or, I mean, oh, man. Um, it's got maybe, it's, I mean, it's, maybe it's a completely different character. Who knows? I mean, I'm not, uh, big on the, um, the DC universe, um, but I'm pulling it up right here. Okay. Harley Quinn is, it is a complete, looks like it is a completely different character, sort of. You look at the cover. This is Harley, this is Harley Quinn. Um, huh. Interesting. Um, Green Lantern meets the challenge of the Harlequin. Um, but we all know that the Hartley Harley Quinn that we all know and love is this one right here, Harley Quinn. And her first appearance is this one, Batman Adventures number 12. And that is the Harley Quinn that we know and love from the Batman anim anim animated feature. And this was from September of 1993. So, hmm, I'm going to have to do some more research about this. But this is really, really cool. I did not know about this character. Um, because if you, again, if you go back and you look at that character, very similar looking to... Um, Harley Quinzel that we know from the, the comic books now, of course. So, uh, Antoinette, that these actually were probably about $10. Um, looking at Key Collector, which is a reference guide that I use, um, I don't think that, that Key Collector has this particular world's finest as a um, key issue. Um, I think 207... World's finest comics, there it is, and this is gonna go. We'll jump up to two eleven. Uh, oh, there it is, two eleven. This is a right here, um, a low grade, which is probably what this is. Is worth about it's probably about a dollar. Um, it's probably be. It, I mean, if you look at this, you have some really bad um, wear and tear on the spine. Um, some, I guess, like fracking or whatever you want to call it. Um, there. Um. Not bad up here on the top. I would take it out of the plastic if I had some uh, some white gloves, but you can kind of tell here. Um, I don't know. Got to focus. Get it to focus. It won't focus. Stupid Instagram live. Um, not horrible shape on the inside, as you can kind of see from the um, there. Um, but yeah, the, again. The spine's a little worse for wear, um, but really cool book. Like I said, a high grade um, would be $30 for this particular one. Um, number 207, which is another one that I showed you. Um, not in this, not represented. Uh, then we get to the other one. 202 is... Um, again, there you go. Values reflect, uh, reflect recent certified graded auction sales. So, um, but these, I think I have some old comics from about 20 years ago. Uh, Antoinette, we need to talk because, uh, those would be books that probably I'd be interested in. I mean, I know they'd be from the late nineties, maybe the early two thousands, but Hey, I'll still take a look at it. But again, this is kind of unfair because, uh, for, um, it's kind of like, uh, it's 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 all based on appreciation. Obviously, the the key of this is, of, of course, you have Neil Adams, the art, the cover artist, um, and these represent um, probably what they sold for on eBay, like on an average. That's kind of what Key Collector uses. 
Um, and today we'd have to take a look and see what you have in your book because a lot of modern age books you're looking at first appearances um, for uh, what they're worth. So, um, so anyways, so that is the silver and bronze age books that I added to my collection. Pretty sweet. I'm gonna do a little extra unwrapping here. So let me flip this around because I have to put the camera. Um, this is a art germ. Um, uh, Captain Marvel, uh, number one, this was from, I believe a few months ago. Um, I actually thought I had this book, but apparently I did not. Um, so we're going to open it because I usually get everything, um, art germs. So I'm probably going to have to relook at, oh, I don't want to rip it like that. Bring out an old trusty, just don't stab myself. Don't stab the book. What's up, dude? Luis, what's going on? Sorry if I missed you uh, yesterday if you went to the movies. Um, couldn't make it to John Wick. I don't know if you went. You and uh, Jess made it or not. Um, and uh, glad you could finally join us. I'll, I'll do a wrap up here in a second. So this was pretty cool. Walmart actually released these... Um, Oh, let me stand up now. Um, Walmart released these. These were a three pack of books for like maybe 10 bucks. Three great Marvel comics, one terrific price. And like I said, I think they were like 10, 15 bucks. This art germ book um, in and itself is probably worth, um, I don't know, probably, I mean, well beyond its cover price, probably anywhere from about seven to $10 uh, just based on uh, an art germ name um we've got a eh, kind of cool second printing though of spider-man number 234 um this is a current run um of uh the spider-man series featuring miles morales I'll show you that here in a second so a second printing featuring the sinister six uh and uh, miles morales this is his book this is a legacy um, cover so um, it's the second printing of this book so uh, pretty cool cover well, I like that and then this is a first looks like it's a first print let's take a look uh, no it's right there it is issue number three of weapon X it is a second printing um, and for those you don't know I'll show you why I know this is other than it says second printing right there. So here's the title, right? Weapon X. Um, and uh, da, 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 da. this may not even be a first print on the Captain Marvel. Um, this might be a, this looks like a seventh printing, but it doesn't say it though. Um, you look, when you look at, for those who are into comic books, so obviously it'll tell you right there, issue number three, second printing. But you can always tell by the barcode here. So the first three numbers represent the issue number, which is technically 003, right? Then the um, this is the second number where it says number one means this is a, a, a first cover, a cover A. This is the main cover, um, a non-variant, okay? And then the last number is a... Um, is the, the print number of it. So when you go back to this Spider-Man book, so again, you have Spider-Man number 234, and this is a Marvel Legacy uh, book. So what that means is that Marvel rebooted the number system about two or three years ago um, where they were doing like, oh, it's, it's Spider-Man issue number one, number two, number three, number four. And then they got to a point where they're like, okay, the Spider-Man book just called Spider-Man, not amazing, not spectacular, just the book called Spider-Man. They're going to go back and count how many books there were, and then they're going to add this run that maybe started at one through seven, add it to the old number, and they created what's called a legacy number. So that means that this book may be issue number eight in this particular volume, but is at issue number 234 overall in the entire Marvel run of, uh, of uh, Spider-Man. So, uh, so again, going back over here, you look at the barcode. This is a second printing, so it's issue number 234. It is the first, it's a cover A, but it's a second printing. Now, you're thinking, oh, well, like, second printings or third printings, those kind of suck. 
they're not that good, but sometimes they're super rare. Um, in this particular case, obviously it's not a first print. Um, I didn't know they did multiple prints on variants, but this is again, issue number one, which we can tell up here with the mar with the number above the artist uh, and the, above the creators. Of course, you have Carol Danvers, uh, very obvious art germ-esque cover. Um, you have 00, 00, 001, that's issue number one. It's a third um, per, a third cover. So this is a cover, it would be called a, called a cover C. And this is a seventh printing. Now, I didn't know that they did multiple printings of variants. Um, but with Art Germ, it's very much a possibility. So um, I'll do a little bit more research on this one. But this may be, like I said, a, a multiple... Um, of print version so pretty cool i got a bag and board these um there's a good possibility that uh these two books might be uh, up for trade or, or whatnot i'm not a huge spider-man or a weapon x fan uh but uh, definitely love that art germ that is going with me to san diego uh, uh this summer again if you're just joining us we'll backtrack here again world's finest number 211 Number 207 and number 202 from the, uh, I think it was the 70s. Captain America, first appearance between Punisher and Cap. Uh, Avengers, number 61, a bronze or uh, probably a silver, a borderline silver bronze age book featuring uh, the new team of uh, um, Vision, Hawkeye, Black Panther. I think that is... Um, I don't know. That might be a version of Ant Man, or maybe that's Yellow Jacket. That might be Van Dyne. But that again, not one hundred percent sure. That might be a version of Doctor Strange. It looks very much like him. That's definitely the Black Knight. Uh, I don't know that character, and I don't know this character right here. This kind of rock kind of character. So, nonetheless, again, Fantastic Four number eighty six, Uncanny X Men number two zero one. Uh, we need to re bag and board that one. Yep. Not the bag, re back on board that one. Uh, Danger Girl, uh, issue number one, feet Danger Girl and G.I. Joe, issue number one. Superman, the Man of Steel, at number 18, first appearance of Doomsday. Uh, Michael Turner, Justice League of America, number one. And Birds of Prey, number 10. This is from May of 2011. Again, an art germ cover. Again, guys, thank you so much for supporting me. Thank you so much for popping up um, and uh, making your little comments. If you have any questions about comic books, hit me up. I also follow Empty Tombs Comics. That's empty underscore tombs underscore comics on Instagram. Uh, I also highly recommend you following Comic Asylum, Palm Desert, on Instagram as well. Uh, stop by the store, ask questions. Uh, Javel and Chick and Anna and... Lucy are always more than welcome. And plus, you might run into someone like me or JR or Candice or any of the guys from 111 Comics as well. Adam Sintas. Um, oh, my gosh. Hector. Again, JR. And um, uh, yeah, Andrew Yeager. Again, check them out. Go over and check out 111. I think it's 111 Publishing, actually, it was called. And they've got a new book. If I, if I can't find it. I had it up here couple of days ago but nonetheless they've got a book out um right now and they're going to be um check we got uh, releasing some more books later this year guys have a great night enjoy your weekend if you want to if you're going to be in town check me hit me up uh via messenger i'm going to be at comic-con revolution in ontario on sunday and then of course the countdown is on amazing con in las vegas uh father's day weekend and then of course san diego comic-con in july can't wait going to be an epic summer and uh we're still waiting uh, we're still waiting patiently to hear from comic-con palm springs palm springs comic-con and fantasia con uh, for the city of indio uh, on what they're going to be doing here in 2019 guys have a great night enjoy your friday